Now, welcome to Finextra TV. I'm Hannah Wallace, and we're here at Merchants Payments Ecosystem 2020 in Berlin. Kindly joining me now is Ron Khalifa, Chairman of Network International. Hello, Ron. Thank you very much Hi. for joining us. So, I understand you've had a busy morning already, talking in a session on leadership and what we can expect from 2020. So, let's start there. What was covered, and I know it's a big question, but what sort of is the recipe for a successful business? It was a really wide-ranging um, conversation as the opening session. It was trying to sort of put a landscape out there in terms of what's happening in the payments ecosystem. Why is it changing so fast? What are the drivers for it? Um, how much is, it, is driven by consolidation? Um, what's happening in terms of platforms? How do we think about digital currency? I mean, it was a very, very wide-ranging conversation, which actually, I think, you know, got, got the kind of mood of the conference going. I mean, it's a, it's a great gathering. Mm -hmm. uh, and a good way to start, start the event. Um, and I think it's safe to say payment companies really need to sort of anticipate the next big thing, as you say. Um, so could you highlight for us then, what are the current trends in merchant payments? Well, inevitably, consolidation is happening. There are hundreds and hundreds of deals that have been taking place in terms of uh, M&A, um, consolidations, um, mergers, acquisitions. I think what we're starting to see is increasingly platforms coming together, which are making it much more um, likely to drive scale. Because the thing that's dri is looking for success at the moment in terms of this whole thing is about scale. And businesses are looking to get more volume onto their platforms, onto their technology platforms. That drives better productivity, drives lower unit cost, and obviously drives better margin. So that's the first thing I think that's happening. Obviously, the other piece of it is regulation. There's a huge change in terms of the regulatory landscape, and that's happening not just in terms of in the UK and in Europe, but actually globally. I think increasingly payments has suddenly become at the forefront of the way the regulators are thinking. Understandably so, because it's such an important and integra integrated system in terms of everyone's day-to-day -day lives. So that's the uh, other uh, aspect which I think is coming through. So that's, yeah, scale, regulation and... And then technology, I think, you know, inevitably, because um, technology is now becoming cheaper as opposed to buying the big boxes that you needed to several years ago. It's increasingly about finding partnerships with fintechs and smaller players working in collaboration with the bigger players because that's actually how you're getting much more value for consumers or for the merchants or for the banks, whichever way you're playing it. So I think it's a really exciting um, future in terms of how this is laying out. The next set of technologies will probably be around virtual assistants, so a combination between voice and basically uh, on the mobile uh, 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 and you know, bringing the AI capabilities together. And that's going to be so exciting because you won't in need to think about it in the same way. And we talked today about the fact that payments are invisible, but I think this is going to you know, transform the way that the whole ecosystem starts to operate. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a very exciting future. Exciting times ahead. Um, and of course, all of this is going to demand some serious good leadership skills. So coming back to that point, what do you think it takes? And what are the qualities of a good merchant payments leader in today's industry? It's, it's a difficult one. I don't think it's any different than leadership in any other activity or industry. Um, having an eye for the consumer, having an eye for the end product, an eye for detail, um, you know, managing through what's going to be a fairly challenging and ambiguous world because I don't think it's particularly clear how the world is going to evolve. And if you were to go back five, ten years and start talking about where's this world come from in terms of payments, you would never have predicted the pace. So I think the agility to ensure that you stay relevant in terms of knowledge, um, in terms of what's going on in the market, what are the different capabilities that are out there, and actually you know, how, do you, how do you drive teams, how do you um, motivate teams, and how do you make them feel part of the solution? The reality is that most organizations, the answer tends to lie lower down in the organization. It doesn't lie at the top of the organization, not really with the CEO or with the board. The people who really know what's going on are the people who are you know, looking after customers, managing their queries, listening to them and ensuring that there's a way to you know, increase that knowledge and ventilate upwards is really at the heart of success, I think. What are your primary goals looking ahead at Network International? So Network International is a fantastic business. It's basically um, IPO'd um, last April. Um, it's a large payments provider in the UAE and Africa, and it's dealing with a huge opportunity. There's one and a half billion people in that part of the world. And that one and a half billion people are basically using cash. 86% of transactions are all cash. So the question is, how do you digitize that economy? How do you digitize and make life so much easier and simpler for the people who are either in retail or consumers? That's the task that we've got. 
and the team there are absolutely focused on that. Wonderful. Well, Ron, I can hear it getting a bit busier behind us, so I'll let you get back to the event. And thank you so much for sharing your insights. Delighted to be here. Thank you.